All right, welcome back to Close Up. He has certainly been an outspoken advocate for dealing with the state's drug epidemic. And Manchester Mayor Ted Gassis, certainly no stranger to state or local politics either. But how will he start to separate himself from the Republican field as the primary really gets underway in earnest? And Mayor Gatsis and candidate for governor, my next guest this morning. Good to see you, sir. Josh, thanks for having me. Yeah, so you filed this week, but it also came with a little bit of controversy with one of your primary opponents, and that's uh, Chris uh, Sununu, um, saying basically there he hasn't seen on the opioid issue, leadership at the state or local level. Well, Josh, I don't have to tell you that uh, you've been interviewing me about this issue for the better part of a year and a half, and I've been out in front saying that this epidemic uh, is a challenge to the state, and it should be a, a state of emergency that's declared in the state so we can talk about it. So I think it's important that we understand that the men and women in the police department, the fire stations, are doing great jobs. In the first, since May 4th, we've had 120 people report to safe stations, either report there or call 211. So the program that we have here in Manchester is working. We've been the first community out front. I've always said, if you can give somebody immediate help, not tomorrow, not in two hours, immediately, you'll get them to a position that they want to get in if they're asking for it themselves. That's the best thing we can have. And I will point out that he clarified his statements later saying that it, it didn't include first responders, but whatever uh, the damage was already done. And obviously there was a, a tweet, tweet from Manchester's uh, police chief uh, calling the comments outrageous. Moving forward, though, do you see the opioid epidemic as the number one issue facing the state? It's not that I see it, Josh. It's people that I talk to throughout this state. They see it as the number one issue. It's not just here in Manchester. It's in the state of New Hampshire. We've got to talk about it. We've got to find solutions to the problems. We've got to get the money to these nonprofits as quick as we can. There can't be delays because they're out there helping people and they're saving lives. People are dying from this fentanyl epidemic. And you're going to lay out a blueprint this week, a comprehensive blueprint of what your plan would be from the corner office. We're going to do that. We're going to talk about safe stations as we have here in Manchester. I think that's important. And we're going to make sure that we declare this a state of emergency. And what will that do? Because uh, Governor Hassan uh, obviously has heard your call to, to declare it's a state of emergency and says there's nothing more that can be done with that. Well, I think it heightens the discussion across the entire state. If everybody's talking about it and you have the leader of the state going from community to community to make sure that we can find solutions to the problem, that's what's most important. A governor is going to be having to roll up their sleeves and I can tell you that in the city of Manchester I've rolled up my sleeves and I come forward with solutions to fix problems. Yeah, Safe Station's obviously been uh, very successful in terms of getting people in there and asking for help. Um, and you've also invited uh, the Governor's Commission on Substance Abuse and Alcohol to kind of showcase this program. How would you implement it statewide? Well, I think it's pretty easy. Not every community has a fire station that is 24 seven. I understand that. But there's nothing wrong with putting up uh, a, a little card on the window that says, if you've got a problem, dial 211. Now, I applaud uh, that we have an 800 number in the state of New Hampshire, but I don't think as many times as you've talked about it, you can tell me what that 800 number is. We've got to find a three-digit number that when people need help, they can remember it, they can dial it, and they don't have to worry about how am I going to find that 800 number. Does it mean need more resources, though? I mean, even Chris Nunu, your opponent, said anybody who thinks we don't need to spend more money on this is crazy. Well, I don't know if it's uh, more resources, but I can tell you that when the private sector sees a solution that's working, they'll step up. I've had people in the local community of Manchester, the board of Mayor and Alderman the other night approved $100,000 for Amber's Place. I can tell you that once people see that, there will be other businesses that will step up and say, if they believe in this solution, then let's work on it, let's get it done. Yeah, and this gives me a good segue. How does this play into your economic plan? Because a lot of the candidates are now saying it's very much tied together to the opioid epidemic in New Hampshire's economy. Well, I think the economy in New Hampshire, there's no question that the first thing that I see that's, a, that's charging the economy is energy costs. So if we want to talk about the economy, we better talk about energy costs. And we've got to make sure that New Hampshire is not going to be a donor state when Northern Pass brings the power into Massachusetts, into the grid. I think it's, that's an important discussion to have. 30% of that power should stay right here in this state so that New Hampshire is not a donor state. And so to talk about that. Is that something that uh, you've reached out to uh, uh, Eversource about and kind of talked to some of the stakeholders in this about keeping some of that power here? Well, I can tell you that we should learn from our past experiences. We had Seabrook. If we'd have kept 20% of the power in Seabrook right here in the state of New Hampshire when we sold it, we wouldn't be having this problem today. We should learn from that and we should say, if you want to bring the power down, 
30% of that power has to stay in New Hampshire so that it's at the low rate here for New Hampshire residents. A lot of people say a diversified market is also what will lower the cost for energy. One of the things that was uh, talked about a lot now is the pipeline, um, uh, the Kinder Morgan pipeline to bring natural gas into New Hampshire. Uh, what was your thought on that pipeline and is that part of the equation? Well, Josh, let's talk about the, the plants that are here now and existing. We've got a plant in Bow. You know, we invested $495 million in the scrubbers in Bow. We're going to tear that plant apart and sell it, and we're not going to have any of that money paid for. I think that we need to start looking. You know, remember in the early 2000s, the, the state of California was having a problem with brownouts and blackouts. That wasn't happening in New Hampshire. Why? Because we had diversification. We can't depend on one sort of energy because that's not going to get us through this problem. And obviously, Mayor of Manchester and your executive officer in a city with a lot of people, biggest city in the state, obviously. Um, as you make this case about you know, energy reform or whether it's the uh, war on opioids, what are you hearing from the middle class in terms of what can be done from the corner office to make their lives better and put more money in their pockets? Well, Josh, I can tell you that I'm the only candidate, Republican or Democrat, that has the business experience, the executive experience, and also the legislative experience. I was a state senator. I'm doing the things in the city of Manchester that you would have to do as governor. We've kept our energy costs down because we changed lights on Main Street to LED lighting. We reduced our cost from a million three to 900,000. We've kept our health insurance costs stable. Why? Because we renewed, renegotiated contracts. Those are things that I would look at in the state of New Hampshire to see how do we prevent those costs from continuing to rise and how do we make life better and more compassionate for people in the state of New Hampshire. Remember, Josh, 47% of the people in this country, in this country, if you handed them a $400 bill, couldn't pay it with cash. Is it possible, obviously we hold you know, our no sales or income tax you know, dear here in New Hampshire. Do you think it's possible to lower property taxes, uh, which a lot of people say is the biggest burden facing uh, the next generation and people who are getting older still living in their homes. Is it possible to lower those prop property taxes without some sort of broad-based relief? Well, let me just tell you, Josh, I'm opposed to an income tax or a sales tax. If either one of them come to my desk, sure. I will veto them. I can tell you that the first thing I will do is propose a constitutional amendment so that we can get the, on the ballot no sales tax in the state of New Hampshire, excuse me, no income tax in the state of New Hampshire and let the people vote on it again. I think that's what's very important. We need to look, how do we find efficiencies and how do we get government to work for the people? But is there a way, do you, sure do you think? Absolutely, we've done it here in the city of Manchester. Uh, for uh, talking about property tax relief. Well, we can't continue to downshift from Concord to the local communities because the only place they can go is to increase property taxes. And they've downshifted an awful lot of money to the local communities. Now, let's talk about the campaign some more. We only have a couple of minutes to go. Time is flying. Jeannie Forrester, she filed this week, uh, uh, state senator, Senate finance chair, also taking the pledge for a spending cap in this campaign, putting it like $640,000. Is that even something that you've considered? Well, Josh, I can tell you that I've never taken the pledge when I've ran for the state Senate or for mayor or for governor. I don't take that pledge. We go out. We have a lot of friends that want to contribute to the campaign. We'll continue raising money and we'll make sure that this is a campaign that everybody understands. We've got a we're going to crisscross this state and people will know who Ted Gatsis is when it comes 96 days from today. But you also have a R next to that name, and you're going to be asked about this by every reporter. I mean, it's already happened. Donald Trump, he's at the top of the ticket. Um, how do you navigate that? And are you concerned about uh, some of the things that he's saying? You know, he, Donald Trump is his own person. I, he gets away with a lot of things that any other candidate, if they set him, wouldn't be in existence. So I can tell you he's the nominee of the party. I'm going to support him. I'm going to do what I can do to help him if I can. But I'm going to be running my own campaign, and I'm going to be in this state talking to people every single day. And, but moving forward with, through this campaign, uh, is it a fine line you have to walk from, with the guy no, at the top I of the No, I never walk fine lines, Josh. I think you know me well enough by now. Sure, but Donald Trump is obviously someone that everyone's trying to figure out how do we run with him and not against him. And at the end of the day, do you believe that he might have coattails that are worth being on? He's the nominee. He's the nominee, and that's who I'm supporting. There's no question. All right. Other priorities moving forward. We'll have a couple of uh, minutes here. Uh, we spent so much time to spend on the heroin and opioid epidemic and talking about the economy. But we're in, in an economic 
situation where the state of New Hampshire is among the best in the country when it comes to low unemployment. So what can be done, what needs to be done to make it better? Well, Josh, we need to make sure we look at health care costs. Health care costs have yeah. to come down. There's no question they continue to rise 15, 20, 30 percent. That's not something that small businesses can afford. The other thing is the burdensome regulations that small business look at. They are the backbone of this state. They're the ones that create jobs. They're the ones that hire people. It's not the state. We need to take some of those regulations off their back and let them go. Lastly, on health care, is Medicaid expansion under the ACA here to stay, or is that something you think needs to go? Well, we need to take a look at it. It has to be a, a New Hampshire solution. I think that they've brought something forward. We have 46,000 people that are on uh, that program right now. If we're going to take it away, we better find something to insure them because they're going to go to the uninsured roles, and that means that uh, the costs are going to go up even higher. Somebody's going to be paying for it. A major policy initiative this week on the opioid crisis. Absolutely. All right, looking forward to that. Thanks. Mayor, good to see you. Josh, thanks for having forward. me. You got it. My pleasure.